Hey everybody, this is Debbie Levitt, Director of Marketing at Inkfrog, with a quick video to show you how to strip HTML out of your listings description uh, if something has imported or you've copied and pasted something and you just want to really clean up that item description. Because remember, the best way to use Inkfrog and, and really to use any system is to make sure that your item description is just your item description. Without pictures, without uh, a template built into it, without your policy built into it and that way when you use a free or custom template you have better control over what drops where so I've created a little uh, item in my library called how to strip out HTML and we're going to start out with a listing that uh, one of our users was gracious enough to let me copy from one of her uh, Octiva listings so uh, once that loads up I'm going to show you what it looks like and then take a look at how we're going to um, how we're going to strip that out. HTML can be a little bit scary, so I want everybody to just be real careful when you're handling it, kind of like uh, an open fire or um, a car. So uh, let's be really careful with our HTML. Sorry, I've got lots of corny HTML jokes. I hope you won't mind. Um, okay, so let's say that I get into a listing and it's got all this stuff going on in it. So we can do a quick preview and I can show you what something like this looks like so you can get an idea kind of of the before and after of what it's going to look like. Um, okay, now this has, okay, so it's dropping in our pictures and it's an Inkfrog template, but once we get down into the description, it's actually an Octiva template inside of an Inkfrog listing. So this is another great example of why we want to clean these things up. We've got product images in here, and as we scroll down, we've got payment policies and shipping policies, and you definitely want to be able to control those separately, drop them into the templates, a template separately, and things like that. So you can see this is kind of our before. And I'm going to X that out and go back to our other window. Here we go. So this is what it looks like in HTML. It's really a gigantic, gigantic mess. Now one thing you don't want to do is paste this into Word and deal with it in Word. Definitely not. Word writes even worse HTML, so you want to uh, just get rid of it. Now HTML is all basically text. Some of it is text that the user sees when they're on the web, and some of it is behind the scenes instruction to the browser of how to display stuff. So the idea is to just kind of quickly eyeball it and see if you could pick out little pieces. For example, I can look at this and I could see, hey, wait a minute, this is her title. And again, we can strip out the title because we are going to have the template drop in the title. So that's going to come out. So let's keep going down and down and down a little bit and see if we can eyeball where her description starts. It looks like it starts here. This is a lot of two vintage Victorian trade cards. Great. So what I'm going to do is put my cursor here and I'm going to uh, click down and scroll over everything that came before it and hit my delete key. Now note that I'm in the code view, not in the WYSIWYG editor. We'll jump into the WYSIWYG editor later, but for now I'm in the code view. Um, so let's see, it looks like this is her description, and let's take a look. We can kind of eyeball it and, and disregard some of the HTML, especially if you don't know what it is. The backs are blank, okay, condition, uh, good with some surface dirt. Okay, this is still part of her description. Size, each is approximately two inches wide, two inches wide, um, blah, blah, blah. Then I move down and it's a lot of code and maybe you don't know what that means. Payment. Oh, okay, now we're getting into her policy, so let's work backwards. The last thing we recognize as being part of the description would be where she talks about size. So after the period, I'm going to drop my cursor there, and then I'm going to select the whole rest of everything. Now this is going to go on for quite a lot. Don't be surprised if you have a lot of HTML. Some of you will have very little, some of you will have a crazy lot. This is a crazy lot. I've selected it all. I'm just going to hit my backspace key and I think it's going to take a moment to uh, wake up because that's a lot to take out. Okay, so now this is what I have and you might look at this and say, I don't understand this, Deb. I don't know HTML. This still looks kind of gobbledygooky to me. Well, now that we've cleared out a lot of the HTML, now we can go into our WYSIWYG editor and clean it up the way we'd like it to look. 
um, hey, that looks pretty good. We took out her template. Uh, we took out the pictures. We took out her policies. This is really clean, but it's a little bit inconsistent. This is one font. This is a different font. We may want to kind of sort this out a little bit. So I can select all of it, and let's say I'd like it all to be an Arial font, and I like my stuff a little bit bigger. I'll say Arial 3, and this still came up as times, so... I'm not too sure. You'd have to kind of go into the HTML to do a better job pulling that out, unfortunately. But I'll show you what that looks like if you want to get into HTML a little bit. Why not? If you don't, stop the video now. Basically, you're looking for where is it saying make this times. Um, well, here's the word times. Now, HTML tags always start with a less than symbol and they end with a greater than symbol. So that's an HTML tag right there. I can, and so span will always have a matching end span, and end is a slash. So this end span goes with this begin span. And span just basically means between span and end span, I want you to do something with this. I want you to apply some sort of formatting to this. So we can say delete, and then of course delete its matching end span, and keep looking for this to come in again, because yucky HTML does this. So here we have another one. This is Times Roman, and it's going to have a net matching end span way at the end here. All right, looking good. Now, WYSIWYG, hey, I, I did it. I got the Times font to come out. I've got all my font looking really consistent now. Now, remember, don't do a lot of formatting in your descriptions. Don't center everything. Don't force font colors. Because if you use a template now that has a white background, and maybe down the road you change your mind and you want a dark blue background, and you've been forcing a black font, you're going to have a black font on a blue background. You're going to be very unhappy with that. It's hard to read. So as I like to say, let the template and the design be the design, and let the information just be information. You can use bullet points if you want. Let's say we decide to make some bullet points. Bullet points. There we go, two nice looking bullet points. Bullet points are great, and don't make everything bold. Remember, bold only works when bold stands out from non-bold text. If you make everything bold, then it, nothing stands out because it's all bold. So use bold where you, where you really want to draw attention to something. So um, that's an example of stripping out HTML. Feel free to watch this video over and over and over. I know it's a little bit confusing, but basically you're just kind of eyeballing for where all the gobbledygook starts and all the gobbledygook ends, and you just want to pull it out because ultimately you want your item description to just be an item description. That way, whatever you say over here in your payment policies, we can drop into a template. Whatever you say here in your shipment policies, we can drop into a template and that will look really great. So let's do a preview and see what kind of listing we have now. If we were to put it up with this particular uh, Inkfrog template, let me grow this window a little bit. Okay, so same thing. There's our pictures being dropped in by the Inkfrog template. And there you're, now you're saying, Deb, why is this centered? Well, that's because whoever designed this template actually said whatever they put in their item description, center it. I say, don't worry for now. We're going to work on rebuilding and redesigning all of our templates, and they will not default to centering because I just don't like the way that looks. I like left justified text. I like things to look like newspapers and magazines and books, and I want them to look very professional. So don't worry. We're going to be working on... Uh, on stripping that out and giving you guys all new better design templates that are much better for what's going on in eBay in 2009 and beyond. So that is my little video on how to pull out the HTML by yourself, how to pull out Octiva's templates by yourself, how to pull out other people's templates by yourself, and how to just really clean up a listing so that the only thing you have left is the item description. Thanks a lot.